folks uh, welcome back uh, today we are going to continue with the discussion on ASAs and uh, we'll actually look into uh, uh, very specific uh, configuration which is the NAT configurations right so what we'll look into we are going to look into uh, the various kinds of NATs right the first one is going to be the source NAT and then we're going to look into destination NAT and twice NAT right under source NAT we're going to have multiple types as well we're going to look into the dynamic NAT static NAT dynamic path static path and so on right so let's uh, get into it right away I mean the you already know the topology which we have discussed in the previous uh, video and uh, all the configurations stay intact we have like all the routing protocols OSPF EHRP and RIP on them so this is my ASA on which I'm going to do all my NAT configuration right so let's uh, pick the first one so uh, so source NAT right so what is the main distinction between source NAT and destination NAT? I think you guys already know what is NAT, right? Network address translation, where uh, you know uh, um, you, you can't expect an uh, organization to have an abundant list of public addresses, right? So we do network address translation, which kind of helps you to use the private addresses inside the network. But then when the packet goes out of the network, it will be it will still have a public address for that or the you can replace the internal address or you can replace the private address with the public address so that you know that particular device or that particular application is reachable from the outside world right so um, as you see here you can see the 1011 network and the 192 168 network so both these networks are private but this particular network over here 192 1.20.0 is basically my is my public right address space right so let let us pick up uh, uh, you know the different types of NAT the first one is the source NAT right so what happens in my source NAT uh, it's better to you know pick an example and you know go with that right so in source NAT I'm gonna talk about let's let's talk about the router R1 and R2 right R2 is the internet it's the outside space and R1 is my inside network right so now let's say uh, we want a packet to go from um, you know R1 to R2 right right so we want um, we want some communication to happen we want uh, R1 to go out and um, you know any packet which originates from R1 it will basically have a, pub, uh, a private address right as the source address which is going to be my 10.11.0 now that is totally fine if we were talking or if we are communicating with devices within the network but once we cross the ASA and we are going into the internet the private address space has no value in it or you know you can't use the private address to reach this device again because private address is very specific to the private network so we need to do NAT right on the ASA so what does NAT do here NAT basically picks up the address right of the packet which is the private address space and translates it into a public address right it picks one public address which is free and it will uh, translate that and so that the packet when it leaves the ASA it would um, have a public address as the source address so that anyone in the internet space or outside you know the network can reach back right using that public address right so the translation you need to always remember the translation happens in both the directions so when uh, the packet goes through the ASA in one direction there is a translation happening right this address the 1011 address is replaced by or translated by Translate it into a public address of this sort 192.1.20 and something and at the same time when the packet comes back right from the um, 192 network right when it comes back into my uh, Inside network again. That is the same translation. You know the reverse translation happens Right now uh, that was the basic funda behind the translate uh, behind the NAT now. What is source NAT and destination NAT? Uh, so there is a very big misconception where people think that if the source address of the packet is undergoing a translation then it is called source NAT no that is wrong right source NAT basically refers to the translation where you know any of my internal IP address right in this case the 1011 network is getting translated into a public address right it could be in either direction when the packet is you know um, going in this direction or when the packet is coming from R2 to R1 Right. If there is a translation happening, and the translate, and as part, and as part of the translation, if my internal address is changing, right, then it is a source NAT, right. Similarly, 
if um, you know my remote address is undergoing a change right if the remote address or if the external address or you can call it as a foreign address is undergoing a change then it is called as destination NAT right so we will understand that when we start with the configuration so that was like the main distinction between the source NAT and destination NAT now let's pick up uh, probably the first one which is my dynamic NAT right so Right, so for dynamic NAT, to explain dynamic NAT, let me pick up uh, the traffic which goes from the inside interface to the outside interface, right, the R1 to R2. Right, so the use case or basically the problem statement is that when, uh, you know, the traffic goes from R1 to R2, you know, the, uh, the private address of the packet which is that over here which is 10 network 10 11 11 network has to be translated into the public right so that is the basic funda and we will do the configuration and we will also check if it is working right so how will we do it let's start with that so let's pull this up so it's going to be uh, dynamic NAT, right so how do we do it so we need to start by defining a pool right because um, we are talking about uh, translating um, this network into you know public right we are basically translating a private address into a public address now what what set of public addresses can you use right generally public addresses are set, are very um, are provided for organization so they have like a fixed number of them and we can't use random public addresses we need to use the ones which you know are provided for that organization right so we're going to use that so let's define a pool so how do you define that you use the command object network right let me define this as pool 1 and now you define the range right and let me define the range as 192.1.20.101 right and uh, from 101 it starts and ends still probably till 200 let's give it as 200 1.20.200 right so this is my range so i can use any of the ip addresses within this range this is the public address space now once we define that we need to define which address can use this pool, right? And in our case, we want this 1011 network to use the pool. So let's define that as well. So the command is again uh, object network, right? So let's define uh, object network, right? Sorry. Object network and uh, I want the inside network, right? So let's define inside net, right? and uh, inside network and we go down and uh, we need to define the subnet which is 1011 network 10.11.11.0 and 255.255.255.255 uh, right so this is my subnet and uh, now the command now the nat command which is very important right so the nat command in the NAT command, I need to define the interfaces. So this particular traffic is going from R1 to R2. So it is from inside to outside, right? Inside to outside and um, what kind of a NAT I'm working on here. I'm using, working on a dynamic NAT. So it's going to be dynamic, right? And pool one, right? Dynamic NAT, which pool? This is the pool which it has to use. So this is the configuration which basically goes on my ASA. So once I do this, I will be uh, able to um, do a telnet from R1 to R2 and uh, we can actually see the network translation actually happening, right? So let's do that. Let's pick this configuration and put it on my ASA, right? my ASA is over here. So I think we will be able to do that. Yeah. So that should be good. Let's do this. There you go. So that, oh, we have dropped the configuration now. Now I think we can test it uh, by doing a telnet, right? Let's do a telnet from R1 to R2 and see the magic, right? So let's do a telnet to 192.1.20.2, right? So I got a password. Let me put the password. There you go. So the telnet worked. Let me look at the users, right? So 
when you looked here you can uh, see here that the address right has been translated right it is uh, uh, the the tenant session right it was initiated from 10 11 11 network but you know because of the network address translation the address which is actually being used in the packet which is going the other side is 192.1.20.176 which was actually uh, my no it was part of this right so let me show you that show nat let's do a show nat details right so this was the address space we used right from 101 to 200 and also see xlat right so it clearly tells that I'm using this address 10.11.11.1 was translated to 192.1.20.176 right so that was basically the dynamic NAT which we just did okay now moving on so now what we'll do is we'll look into the second one which is my so we are done with this Let's just put the tab right so we're going to do static NAT now so what is the premise for using static NAT? So for static NAT, um, we are going to assume, um, right, we have the traffic coming in from the outside network and uh, the outside network basically wants to uh, communicate with my DMZ, right? So we have a traffic going in like this. So now, um, if you remember, so if you, if you want the outside network to talk to R3, you can't use the address 190 to 168, right? They have to use a public address space right because this is the private network so um, that is why we need to use static NAT here so on the ASA we need to configure few NAT entries right and we have to explicitly tell the ASA uh, or we have to explicitly tell my outside network that you need to use this particular IP address this particular public IP address to reach this um, you know device over here to reach R3 Right, so that's why that's why we need to use static NAT and not dynamic NAT because we use dynamic NAT here because the traffic was going from inside to outside, right? So it can pick up any public address which is pre, and it can you know communicate outside. But that is not the case when the traffic is coming from outside to inside, right? So the outside the guy who is on the outside should have a address to reach this person, and that is why it is static. We're gonna use static NAT here, right? So let's do the configuration for better understanding. Uh, you know probably let's uh, let's assume that my r3 is some kind of a web server or something of that sort right um, I think that would be helpful mm, let me think uh, no it's fine okay I'm gonna assume my um, r3 is is, uh, is a device and um, to which we need to tell it from outside right so let's do that so let's do object network right and we're going to call it as r3 that's a configuration and the host we need to define the host so the host which you want to actually reach which is my r3 right so it's going to be 192.168.1.3 right so that is my ip address of the uh, r3 host which is over here right you can actually check that if you have a confusion to show ip interface brief Right, you can see here 192.168.1.3 I'm going to use that and uh, the next is my NAT command just like how I did earlier here the traffic um, we need to go to the DMC right and uh, the interface is going to be the outside interface right so it's a neat trick you can remember always this address is associated I mean 99% of the time this address is associated with this interface over here right and uh, this uh, interface is basically associated with the address which I'm going to write now so what kind of a NAT it's going to be a static NAT and the address is 192.1.20.24 let's use probably 24 right this is basically my public address right which I intend to use right so this is static NAT so now let's see how this looks uh, just remember when we did uh, dynamic NAT you know we had to do a telnet from R1 to R2 and only then we had this NAT entry being shown here right but that is not the case with static NAT as soon as you put the command which I have copied now let's go and put it here 
right? So I have put this, right? I have put this. Did I do it right? Probably not. Let's do it again. Let's probably copy it. Right, okay, so that's good. So we have done the configuration now. Right, so I just cleared my screen. So now if you, uh, um, if you do show xlate, right, let's do that. Right, as soon as it did show xlate, you can see that, uh, you know, the entry, the NAT entry is already available, right? So basically, uh, the 192.168.1.3, which is my R3, is getting translated into 192.1.20.24, right? And uh, we need not even have to pass the traffic for this translation to be shown here, unlike the dynamic NAT, right? For the dynamic NAT earlier, over here, as you see, only when we did a telnet from R1 to R2, this line, you know, came up over here, but that's not the case for static NAT. As soon as you do the configuration, you can see it here, right? So in order to test this, we can test this and uh, uh, we can do that. So what we'll do is from R2, right? We, we are intending to uh, send traffic from my outside to inside, right? So let's do that. Um, and I like I said, from the outside of the network, right? The, I can't reach to uh, 190 to 168 network, but this is the private network. So I need to reach, uh, you know, to this particular public address over here, this one, right? So I need to go to my R2, right? Let's go that. I'm gonna do telnet, and I'm gonna do, uh, okay, let me do a do telnet, and I'm gonna put in my address. Okay, connection refused, hmm. Okay, so connection refused. Why do you think this happened? That's because, uh, you know, ASA doesn't allow any traffic to flow from a low security level interface to a high security level interface, right? My DMZ has a security level of 50, whereas this one is 50. Uh, this one, the outside interface has zero. So to prevent, to solve this, we need to have an access list, right? That is how we punch a hole through the whole fundamentals of ASA, right, by using access list. So we'll do that. So we'll configure our access list here. So how do we do this? Access list, probably let's call it as outside, right, because it, uh, it's on the outside interface, right? Uh, permit, what are you gonna permit? You're gonna permit uh, TCP, right? TCP should work, I think, yeah, TCP should work. Um, any host, right? any host reaching my 192.168.1.3 which is my r3 right on which port eq 23 right so that should work show access list right now we need to obviously put this access list somewhere we need to put it using the access group command right access group where outside Right, the, the access group is basically I'm calling the access list which I named over there. I'm gonna put you know the direction is going to be in interface and it's going to be outside, right? On the interface outside. Let me quickly uh, you know copy this line in my configuration over here so that don't miss it. Right. So for static net we had to do our access list and our access group, right? Over here. There you go. So now we have done this. Now let's see if it works. Let's go back to R2 and try the same thing. There you go, it worked. Right, Cisco. Now I can do show users. Right. And you see the, so I did a telnet from R2, right, using this public address, 192.1.20.24. Right, and uh, the telnet was successful. Right, and uh, yeah, the translation also happened. Right, the translation happened. Right, we, if the translation had not happened, we would not be able to do a telnet with this IP address. Right, so now from the outside of the network, you can reach R3 using this translated address. Right, so that is something which I wanted to show you as part of static NAT. Sweet. So we have done dynamic NAT, we have done static NAT. Now I think it's time to move on to the next piece, which is my 
pat let's rest to pat now <coughs> okay so pat is again um, uh, very interesting because it's port address translation right when you have um, very less number of public addresses you can you know use the same public address but change the ports right so the uh, the fundamentals of the NAT still remains but the only difference is instead of using you know different public addresses uh, we are going to use the same public address with different ports right so yeah we are going to do that now before doing that let me probably go and clear certain things let me clear the things which i did as part of my dynamic NAT so i'm going to do a clear of the x slate right so all the um, x slate is gone right let me also do um, let me also clear the configurations um, of object groups which i did probably right there you go that is done let's do a show run of object to see if anything is that okay nothing is that that's good so now let's start with doing pat right so how do we do pat uh, there are multiple ways of doing pat right so probably uh, I'm going to probably uh, use only one way here you can refer and you can later go and check the other ways of doing it as well right so yeah let's start so the command is obviously going to be my object group uh, sorry yeah object uh, sorry it's going to be object network and I'm gonna call this as inside uh, because I'm going to do pat I'm going to do dynamic pat I'm going to do dynamic pack between R1 and R2, just like how we did dynamic NAT, right? Inside network, sorry. Okay, so subnet, right? The next command is basically be my subnet, which uh, basically is the address which I want to be translated, which is my internal address, 255.255.0. Now nat right the nat command is important and i'm gonna do inside right going to the outside right and uh, you're gonna do dynamic right always remember this address space will always will will 95 99 percent i would say because there are some exception case but most of the time this address space is uh, you know is basically attached to this interface and this one is basically the one which i'm gonna put in now so for part I'm, I can only I can define I can uh, I can just mention it as interface right right so it basically uses the public address on the interface and uh, it will do a part using this right so this is one way of doing it the other way of doing it is also pretty interesting that would require two steps so let me put that as well so that would be object network pool using the pool command sorry uh, using the pool um, we did earlier so let's probably define a different pool here pool a probably right and the host which is 192.1.20.5 the public address which you would want you know the path to use right and then you can uh, probably it's going to be almost the same as this Right, so let's do this object right so this is going to be here and instead of dynamic just the interface we're going to do pat dash pool right and what's the pool pool dash sorry dash a so this is other way of doing it right uh, we can use either one of them so probably i'll use this for now so let me pick this up let's go on my asa and let's drop this right so i have done the configuration now, what do I need to do to test this? I need to do a telnet from R1 to R2. So let's do that. So, yeah, give me a minute. Yeah, that's good. So, you know what? We, I'll actually tell it not only to R2, I'm going to tell it to the loopback of R2 in this one. So, I'm going to do that to 
dot one dot one let's see tenant okay destination unreachable okay let me see sh show route where is the network okay okay so I have named it as 1.2 so it's not 1.1 my bad so it's going to be 1.2 yeah there you go I'm gonna put Cisco and let's do show users right so it has used the IP address which I sent which is 192.1.20.5 right and uh, probably let's also go and check the xlate here so you can see here uh, the telnet actually originated from here 10.11.11.1 with a port number of 38922 and it got translated to this address and uh, you know the IP address or the port basically was the same right it used the same port now this is how PAT works so if there is one more connection going from the same or probably you know from the inside network probably from another device right let's assume that there is one more connection going from 10.11.11.2 .11 .11 uh, on because we are using PAT it would still use the same IP address but it would use a different port right so that was basically uh, uh, the dynamic PAT right now the same thing uh, what we did with NAT we can do something called a static PAT right so when you have the traffic coming in from R2 right so we're gonna do that static path right so um, yeah the use case is pretty much same so you have the traffic coming in from R2 towards R3 and because you know the traffic is originating from the outside network you can't have like a dynamic NAT yet you, can, you should have a static NAT because you need to know a particular address from my outside network you know you know so that they can turn it into right so they need to have an address beforehand so for that let's go back and do the configuration Right, so that's going to be static pad here uh, yeah so um, yeah that should be good so let's do that so it's going to be object right it's going to be object network and let's put it as r3 and uh, the host obviously we need to define the host which is 192.168.1.3 right the address which you want to reach to right which you want to be translated the DMZ one right so the NAT and I have already told you that this would be DMZ this is basically the outside pretty much the same what we did in my static NAT as well there you go this is static and uh, yeah you, you need to define what address you would want to use now right so it's going to be 192.1. dot one dot right 20.11 so let's use this as the public address now which you want the path to use service TCP right you need to define this is basically the concept of port forwarding right so if I put in uh, uh, 2323 it basically means that for this address for the service 23 I'm going to use I'm going to translate it into this particular address and this port right now I can even do that is basically port forwarding because I've used the same ports right I can do port redirection right if I use a different port here it would basically mean I'm using port redirection right so I could do that as well I could show you that so let me change this from 23 to 2311 right so now I need to tell my outside devices that if you want to tell it into this particular device you need to not use port 23 but you should use this port right great and obviously I need an ACL like earlier but I already have them on the device I'm not going to put it again I'm going to just put it here for reference but I already put them on the device right so let me just pick this up and put it on my ASA let me clear the screen a bit there you go so the configuration is done so let me go down to my R2 now right so if I go to my R2 I need to do a telnet to check if it is working so do telnet and uh, I need to use which address 192.1.20.11 right because that is what if you do a show xlate 
you would know that uh, because it is static we already have it right we have here you can see pat and uh, 192.1.20.11 right so this is my um, address which I need to use for telnetting right so I'm on my R2 and uh, the port like I already said I can't use port 23 I need to use 2311 because that's what I've used there you go it worked right I'm inside already R3 show users let's do a show users there you go right so I've got the telnet from R2 and you can see the translation as well here you can also do show NAT you can see the translation um, I've used uh, there is there is this is the translation corresponding to this exercise DMZ to outside I can see that there is a telnet 2311 and uh, you have 192 on this thing I can also show you the details if you want right this is how it looks right this is the uh, part which we just now did right so what we did was we basically uh, uh, set up uh, static I mean dynamic path between R1 and R2 for I mean uh, for the communication between R1 and R2 and then we also did static net if uh, static path my bad if you want the outside world to reach my R3 through path right we set it up and that worked as well over here so the only difference with NAT and PAT is that in PAT we use ports, we use different ports for the same public address, right? Just like how I did here, right? Uh, in this case, I had just one, um, you know, R2 over here, right? Um, so um, if, if I had multiple hosts over here and if I had done Telnet from multiple hosts, then you would have seen that in my uh, NAT translation or in my PAT translation over here, you would have seen that uh, you know I would be using different uh, uh, ports right right now I'm using just one port here I'm using just 2311 but if there were multiple services right then I would be using for the same public address I would be using different ports so that was basically uh, PAT right uh, the whole configuration about PAT is done let's knock that off now the last two things which are remaining is destination NAT and manual or twice NAT look at uh, destination NAT right just to reiterate in destination NAT what we intend to do is the IP address of the remote device or the foreign IP address undergoes a change or is translated right unlike the source NAT where our address or the internal address in the network is translated but in case of uh, destination NAT we are basically trying to change the uh, or translate the foreign IP address or the remote IP address right so now to understand this better let's uh, start by uh, first let's remove the rip on my r3 right so basically my idea is to remove the routing on r3 so that I basically uh, don't have any routing and uh, I don't even have a default gateway on r3 right so that's my aim so let's do that so for that I'll have to do no router rip right that's done let's clear the screen so once you're done with that, now let's see my uh, routing table. You can see that I don't have routes from anywhere else, right? So I just have the directly connected networks because I removed the routing, right? Right, great. Now, what do we do next? Now, um, can we see if, uh, you know, the 199 network here, which is on the outside, can it still reach R3? right can are you able to do a telnet will that work right so before that let's uh, probably go down to the ASA so how, how were we doing this before I mean we, we were able to we accomplished this earlier didn't we we were able to telnet from the outside of the network to R3 we did source NAT right so let's do that let's do a dynam a static source NAT let's go to ASA right um, it's going to be this configuration honestly right it's going to be just this right I'm gonna use probably a different IP address now so let me just pull this so this is part of my destination NAT configuration so that's why I'm doing it right so I'm gonna put this here but I haven't, I haven't done anything new honestly I've done I've just copied the same thing which I had it in the static NAT right let me probably use a different address let me use 2020 here so let me pull this control C and let me drop this here 
right I did this now right now let's see if uh, this works right from uh, from uh, R2 are we able to reach R3 so how do we do that let's probably turn on uh, let's clear the screen let's turn on okay give me a minute yeah so let's probably turn on uh, debugging here on R3 IP packet sorry right we have turned on debugging now let's go to my r2 and let's do a telnet to 192.1.20.20 this is the public side uh, public facing ip of r3 right if you want to reach r3 from outside of the network we have to use this because we have put source translation on my asa and i have you know put a static source net which says that i have to use this ip address to reach r3 right let me go to r2 to do that and let me uh, reach uh, this using the source address which is loopback 199 right this one let's see if this works so it is trying to do a telnet meanwhile let's go to r3 and see what's happening right so you can see the packets are coming here right you can see the packets let me probably pull this on the right okay Think that's stuck okay but anyway you can see the packets going down here right and uh, give me a minute so you can see the packets uh, over here the packets are reaching r3 but then at the same time you know the packets are not able to return because there is no default you know gateway on my r3 right and it says unroutable right so the packets are coming from my 199 network uh, to R3 right and the the packets are coming because the translation is available on ASA right the one which we just now put the source net but um, you know the problem here is you know earlier it was working because R3 also was a completely routable device now we removed the routing protocol and we don't have a default gateway as a result what's happening is on R3 when it sees a packet with the source address of 199.1.1 it really don't know doesn't know what it has to do where it has to send right so in destination NAT we, we change we are we are basically trying to change this IP address right so the packet which has come in it can't have 199 address it should have some address which is part of this network right so that it can route right uh, uh, so destination NAT involves translating both both the addresses right so it will involve one more object group command object network command right and uh, so how do we do that right so um, the idea here is that uh, uh, this, this is something which you won't find in any book right but the idea here is that if you take any object network command right um, it's very important to know that you, you can assume the first interface to be like slot 1 and uh, the second interface to be like slot 2 right and when a, when a packet is received on slot 1 the source address is always inspected whereas any packet received on slot 2 it's the destination packet which gets or destination address which is getting inspected right and uh, you know and based on that you know the translation happens so if we have to retrace the steps here what happens uh, we get a packet from 199.1.1.2 right with the with, um, so that will be the source address and the destination address is going to be 192.1.20.20 right that is what I did just now didn't I right so this was the thing so this is going to be my source address uh, the, the loopback 99 and the destination is going to be this one so this packet starts from outside the network right so this packet is received on the outside interface over here which is basically the slot 2 when, when you look at this command where is uh, the outside interface it's over here so like I mentioned this is slot 1 and this is slot 2 and you see the packet is received on slot 2 and like I already told slot 2 always checks the destination address right so because the packet is received on the outside interface the destination address is checked and when it checks the destination address it finds what does it find it finds the destination address as 192.1.20.20 right it finds this and what it does is 
it immediately swaps or it translates this address to this address that is 192.168.1.3 and that's why the packet is able to reach my R3 and that's why the packet is reaching here so that is the complete packet flow right so that's how it is so it starts from R2 and comes down here right so this is how it works so this is the first interface is always the source address check and the second interface is always the destination address check all right now now that we know that we we need to write one more of this object network command right so that our source address which is 199.1.1 also is translated because like i said earlier we can't retain this address when it comes inside this network here because r3 has no routing capabilities it will not be able to understand what to do with this packet right and that's why you can see here right it is it basically tells it's not routable right so we need to change this address to something one of the unused addresses in this network space so obviously that means that translation requires one more command and we have to start writing that right so let's let's start writing that it's very simple the other object network command which would help us in translating the 199 1.1 network into an address into an unused address of this particular address space so how do we do this let's start with object network r3 right or uh, let's call it wait give me a minute let's call it h199 because we are basically translating the h uh, or the host 199 network aren't we right great so what are we changing we need to write the host address which is 199.1.1.2 great now the nat the nat command right now this place we need to apply the fundum which i already explained so you see that i have already told you guys this address over here is always associated with this interface over here and this address is associated with this interface the, um, this interface is associated with this address right so um, we now know that we are we need to change the source address of the packet which is originating from the outside network right over here and we know that out of these two slots right the uh, the first slot basically um, inspects the source address right and we know this address is reached on the or it basically uh, enters the network through the outside interface right so that is why our first slot here becomes outside right because we intend to swap or translate this particular address and this address is re received or this packet is received on which interface the outside interface and uh, we intend to change the source address of it so that's why you need to put outside over there another one would be dmz right so once you're done with that again nothing but you do a static and you replace it with one of the you know it's going to be this network but some unused address of it so 192 168 1 dot what do we use probably like 79 right we'll do that so now let me pick this up and let me put it up on my asa right that's done okay there was a mistake over there invalid input probably it requires a space my bad so let me put this once again last part great so once we are done with that let me probably clear the screen a bit show x late right you can see 199.1.1.2 basically getting translated to this and 192.168.1.3 getting translated to this one right so now let's go and do the telnet which we intend to do telnet 192.1.20.20 and uh, so this is the destination and the source address is basically the 199 right this address so i do this there you go the telnet opened and it worked right i can do show users and uh, you will be surprised to see though the telnet is originating from where from the loopback 199 which is 199.1.1 but since you know both but since the source address has been translated you know the new address is 192.168.1.79 right and uh, you know this address basically this address got translated to this and that's why you see it over here right so that was destination net so in destination net we actually translated both the source address and the destination address right and it is explicitly called as uh, destination net because we 
translated the destination address the foreign address right we translated the 199 network address to 192.168.179 right but it was combination of both i would say it was combination of both destination net and source net because we also translated right we also translated this uh, 192.168.1.3 which is over here right we also translated this address which was the source uh, which, which is my internal address right 192.168.1.3 is an address which is belonging to my network it's an internal address and we change this internal address to a public address right and uh, so this is basically the definition of source net and this is the definition of the destination net and we achieved that right so we'll go to the last topic now so we have done this and the last part which is remaining is uh, manual or twice net right so the main difference here is i mean what is twice net is if you look at the destination net we used uh, two net commands to achieve this right in case of manual not or twice net we do the same thing but we are able to achieve it achieve both the nets in single single statement of net so that is the main difference that is the only difference right of uh, uh, of twice net right all the nets which we did till now all these above they are basically called as auto net as well right but uh, uh, this is called twice net and if you look at the priority if a router has both types of nets then uh, i mean if a asa has both types of nets then it will take this it will give more priority to this right so that is one thing so how do we do this i mean we are trying to achieve the same thing we are trying to achieve the same thing but we are trying to achieve it slightly different so probably let me remove this uh, let me clear xlate sorry right let's do that and uh, let's also clear any um, configured object groups sorry right so i've removed that there you go all of that is removed now we go to where do we go we go to uh, my sheet here my scratch pad and let's start the configuration how do we do this so there are two ways of doing this right so we can do this in two different ways so um, yeah the definition of twice net as i already told it, it it allows you to change the source as well as the destination address in a single net statement right so let's start so the first part is uh, you need to define all the addresses involved so one thing is start with object network right um, r3 dmc addresses the host is 192.168.1.3 we all know this right this address i intend to mean the next one is object network r3 my outside address right with respect to when it goes outside address what do you want as my outside address which is 192.1.20.20 good right now we need to this do the same thing for the host or the the host 199 as well right so let's do that for host 199 what is the you know outside address it's going to be uh, 199.1.1.2 and uh, for my um, for my host again the internal address or basically the dmc address is going to be 192.168.1.79 right we did this earlier we did the same thing here as well why we did this because our r3 doesn't have any routing capability so it, it will not understand any outside address like 199 it will understand only addresses in its lan or in its address space which belongs to this one 192.168.1.0 so that's why we converted both from this address to this and we converted 192.168.1.3 right uh, we converted this as well to 192.1.1 we basically translated right so this was source net and this was destination net which we did you know earlier right so now we are trying to do club both of them in one single statement so how do you do that net source static right and first you need to write here r3 
D. What is R3D? The the internal address basically the internal address and uh, next we have to define my outside address for this one right that works now you need to write the destination static it's again static but here it's again um, h11d which is this one and I'll, I'll explain to you what this command actually does right you need to write this outside right so we are basically telling that if there is a packet coming from R3D, um, you know, and H199D, right, you basically need to translate R3D to R3 out, which is this one, right, and you need to ch translate this from this one. So that is the main, uh, that's the definition of this, or that's what this command actually does, right, and it does it in both the directions, not only one direction, both the directions. So that's uh, that's why it's called as twice NAT or manual NAT because you're doing it, you know, using one single command, right. Now let me pick this up and do it. Let me put this in my ASA. Right, I did that. Let me show you some things here. Show xlet. So you can see because there are static commands, you know, you already have the entries here. And I also can show you uh, show NAT details probably. You can see uh, clearly it is mentioned as manual NAT, right? It is no more auto NAT, it is manual NAT. Right, so that's good. Now if I do the same, uh, let's disconnect from earlier one. Let's try this. There you go, it worked. Right, let me do show users. And you can see the same, I've, I've established or I, uh, the same connectivity which I did in the earlier case as well, but using one single add statement. Right, and you can see the address as well, 192.168.1.79, which is the translated address for my 199 network. Great. Yeah, so that's everything I wanted to show you guys. Uh, we did uh, everything here. You can have a look here. We start with source net. In the source net, we did dynamic, static, dynamic path, static path, and then uh, we did destination net, right? Where we talked about uh, uh, not only changing the, not only translating one address, right? We we translated not only the inside address but also the foreign address, right? the foreign or the remote address and that's why it's called destination NAT not because the destination address is changing similarly source NAT is not because source address is translated it is because my internal network address is getting translated one of the internal network translate and then we finally went to the twice NAT which was nothing different from the earlier one which we did but only the difference is we were able to establish or we were able to achieve what we did using two NAT statements here using one single NAT statement right and that ends my uh, discussion on NATS. Thank you.